What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. On today's show, we are going to talk all about getting started, uh, how to jump, how to just say yes, not wait for all the details, and just go. And hopefully give you a little push, a little bump, a little nudge to get out there, take action, and, and get started. And what's the worst that can happen? Um, my guest today has bought a few properties in just the past couple months. Uh, buy and hold investor, really exciting stuff. Bought one retail, got another, got a, a good deal on another one. And she's going to talk through all the lessons that she learned, all the bumps in the road, and all the decisions that she made, whether they were good or bad. And hopefully show you that there's a huge upside even when you don't do everything perfect. So um, without further ado, we're going to ro roll the theme music and jump right into it. My name is Bill Allen, and I'm the leader of a group of elite house flippers and wholesalers called Seven Figure Flipping. We don't brag or show off our success, but instead let integrity and stewardship be our guide. We are dedicated to helping people unlock the freedom they desperately need. If you ask other real estate investors, they will say to keep your secrets quiet. But we believe in abundance, not scarcity. And that's why we are the elite. We are Seven Figure Flipping, and this podcast is our playbook. What's up, everybody? I got a great show again today, and I have somebody that you know I met at Flip Hacking Live in October, and she's just really like hit the ground running, motivated, go getter, and I think um, you're going to hear a lot of that in the conversation that we have, and hopefully it inspires you to get out there, take action, and get unstuck. I think there's a lot of people out there who are just kind of stuck, like they want to do real estate, they want to get involved, they want to jump, but they're just afraid. Like they're afraid. They see it's kind of risky and they, they just look at it from a totally different angle. So what I want to do is give a different perspective today. Somebody who hit the ground running and, um, and some of the successes and honestly share some of the things that may, might be struggling with too. And just to have an open conversation about somebody else's story, what they've done, and just show you what's possible for you too. Because I really want you to win. If you're listening to this right now, I want you to win. I, it, whatever you're doing in life and business and your family life, your spiritual life, all that stuff. And, um, and so I'm excited today. I have Marisol Salgado Garcia on the show with me today. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited to talk to you today. And uh, why don't you give everybody like a little background about you? What were you doing kind of before this? Uh, where do you live? That kind of stuff. So I uh, recently retired from the Marines uh, as, as a major. I'm a, I was aviation logistic officer, aviation supply logistics officer by trade. Uh, did 20 years, started as enlisted, transitioned over to the officer side, um, and uh, retired officially one August of last year. Um, my initial plan was to move down to Mexico uh, with my partner at the time. Uh, and we we're going to start a holistic retreat center there. Um, but, you know, life happens. We broke up on 1 January of last year. And then I had to figure out what, you know, what I wanted to do with my life now that that plan was not going to go. So took some time off uh, while I was in Sicily. Uh, that was my last duty st station. Uh, beautiful island, met some uh, great people out there. Um, and, uh, once I moved back to the States, uh, started, uh, just kind of looking at real estate, I, I've bought, uh, my own homes in the past and, um, made some money out of them as I had to sell them essentially, because I was, I've always wanted to buy properties basically where I live and places that I, that I want to live in. Um, so I looked at, uh, started looking at real estate and, um, I, I really appreciated how much money I was able to make up selling the, the homes in California. But I also knew that California, it's, it's tough for being a landlord. So I knew I didn't want to buy there. Um, and through the military, I've made th through some great friends, some of the best friendships that I've had uh, have come through uh, the military, through the Marines. So one of my friends uh, also retired a Marine. He is a realtor down in South Texas. Um, linked up with him, says, hey, I'm looking to buy some property. Uh, I don't know if I'll move to South Texas, but I like it because I can easily go visit family in, in uh, my hometown of, of Chihuahua, Mexico. I'm Mexican, uh, a naturalized citizen. So I um, looked at South Texas, never been to South Padre. So that kind of, you know, um, piqued my interest and told him what I wanted, my price range. And uh, a few months later, bought my first duplex, um, didn't use the VA loan, uh, decided to go conventional, don't know why. Um, but I linked up basically my my military friends, right? I have one that's also part of the runway group. He is a broker. 
he ended up being my broker for that deal. And then my uh, friend, also Marine, he was my realtor. And I put my my trust in, in friends that I've made uh, through the military. So closed that deal, uh, furnished it. It started as an Airbnb and midterm rentals, and they both done great. Uh, went down to check on it and they've been a blessing. And after that, I was like, you know what? This is, this is kind of fun. This is cool. Um, don't know anything about it, but I'll figure it out. And while I was down in South Texas, I came across um, on Instagram, one of the feeds was uh, um, tax lien training by Armando Montalongo and didn't know anything about tax liens. And I thought I was like, well, I can buy a, a property because somebody hasn't paid their taxes. That looked like a great idea, but I didn't know how. So I attended his training down in uh, McAllen, Texas. And then from there, that was the first mentorship group that I signed up for. Um, and at the time I had looked at some properties in Amarillo um, and I looked at one in particular, uh, which was total, um, it, it was, it was gnarly to say the least. Um, I had made an offer on it uh, and with my intent to flip it, essentially. Uh, I learned about the bird process, essentially. Um, and I made an offer at uh, 120, uh, at a 120, I'll say the numbers. Um, they accepted the offer, and uh, when I took my mom to go look at it, she freaked out. And she was like, no, this is way too much. You're getting yourself into a nightmare money pit, uh, basically all the all the no answers, right? And she's done pretty well. She's bought houses here in Texas, and she, uh, after the divorce, she, she expanded her restaurant um, and has done very well. She's retired now. My brother runs her restaurant for her. Um, and so I, I was taking her advice, essentially, and I was like, OK, well, maybe she knows what, what she's talking about. So I ended up backing out of the deal. Um, but while I was down in South Texas at the uh, um, the tax lien training, I showed that same deal to Armando and his team. And he's like, stop being greedy. This is a great deal. We'll show how to we'll show you how to do it um, and just go back in and offer this amount. I'm like. Roger that. I was like, you know, I felt like they knew what they were talking about. So I went back in and that became my first uh, uh, burr, essentially, that we should be finishing up in the next, uh, hopefully before the end of the month. So and since then, I've purchased 20 other doors uh, uh, to include a property in uh, in Florida, about 20 acres. And uh, I'm in the process of rehabbing uh, two more, another house, a single family home. Um so, yeah, um, joined uh, the runway group uh, last year. Same thing. My my friend that was my broker mentioned the runway group. I was like, hey, you need to be a part of this. And he also mentioned uh, uh, David Perret's group, the military millionaire, the war room. So I've been able to get a lot of information and just just go with it, essentially. Not all right. Now, I, just go with it. I got a lot to unpack. I like that. Just go with it. First of all, I didn't know Armando Montalongo was still in education. So that was last year you went to an event of his? Yeah. That's wild. So I remember one of the first TV shows I ever watched was his TV show down in Texas. Like this got me hooked. So I'm sure I've never met him. I'm sure I'll meet him one day. Um, and I know it, I, I would love watching him go into these houses and just like yell at the contractors and stuff. It was wild. So, uh, and then, okay, your mom, lots of no's from your mom. So this is interesting. A lot of times, you know, we, we have these people around us that are like, they want to protect us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, your mom being in real estate, I, I didn't think you were going to say that she was in real estate because a lot of times you got the parents of, you know, a young entrepreneur or somebody who wants to do something and they just, they want to protect you. So they just say, no, don't do that. It's too risky. Da, 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 da. And, um, but it sounds like she had her way and you're doing it maybe some, a little bit different way. So like our mom and his team, you, you mentioned like show, showed you how to do this that way. And so your mom might just not know what you're trying to do and she wants to protect you. Right. A lot of times we surround ourselves with the wrong people. And I'm not saying your mom is the wrong person, by the way, but, and they giving us the answers just to protect us. But a lot of times it's not, it's not what we need. And so you got into group, you got into Armando's group, then our group and the war room and places where people are like, not necessarily just default. Yes, but we are a little bit more like, you know, excited to say, instead of saying no, say, how can this work? And then we go through all of the different looks at it to see if it could. And if it can, if it looks good, then are we willing to say the upside is worth the risk? 
on the front end, right? How do you feel about that? Like getting around the right people and I, I'm certainly not diming your mom out, but it might be a different method that you're, that you're doing on this property that was, is new to her. Definitely. Um, getting around the right people is, is key. Um, I uh, definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll say his name. I, I, cause I told him, I was like, I think you're my unofficial mentor. Cause I, I if I'm going to do something, I was like, well, how would Steve do this? And he, he's my broker. Uh, and he's the one that started talking to me about real, uh, real estate too. He's, he's done phenomenal in, uh, uh, Northern U S and flipping places in, uh, in Florida as well. So, um, started kind of, okay. It's like, well, if he's mentioning this to me again, he's done fairly well. He retired, went to his retirement ceremony and like, I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but surrounding myself with the right people. And a lot of it is like, it's the fear of the uncertainty, right? Like you don't know, uh, one, you don't know what you don't know. And then, so you, you surround yourself with people that are going to challenge you to the next step. And, um, not to say not to talk bad in the ring where I just wasn't feeling challenged anymore. And I feel like I've been there, done that. I'm, I'm ready for the next stage of my life. So that's why I retired and, and not a lot of people in there that I knew of. I mean, I didn't know Adam Whitney at the time, um, that were into real estate. And, and again, my mind was going one way and then as to what I was going to do and life changed. And I started pursuing this, um, uh, with my mom, she's, she's, she's had her way um, of doing things. And most of the time she's more, um, uh, worst case scenario, um, um, uh, pre being prepared, right? She won't take the next step until she knows that this one's good. Uh, whereas sometimes I'm kind of like more going by, by faith and intuition. I was like, you know what, I've done all this for, for 20 years and I'm going to take this step and, and have faith that he's not giving me more than I can handle. So, um, I take the, the advice from people that I've encountered over the years and um, take what information that I know has worked for them um, and, and apply it essentially. So it's surrounding yourself with the right people, being in the right rooms. Um, and if you don't have the entire information, just basically just taking some sort of action instead of sitting in inaction. And I'm, I think our military background doesn't allow us to just sit back and and not do anything we're uh we're very uh, uh apt to like okay let's let's take the next step and and not just wait for things to land on our lap so yeah i love that i think that the the decision making process that you go through is probably a lot faster than than everybody else out there and i think that's the key i've been really thinking about that the last two years or so just the speed at which military members and and really like high risk professions make decisions. So police officers, firefighters, nurses, uh, even doctors, lawyers, things like that. Like it's just the way that they reason in their, in their brain to come up with backup plans. And what if this doesn't happen? They're constantly just like, you know, pl almost playing chess in their mind during all of these things that are happening. We're constantly thinking two, three steps ahead where that gives us a leg up, I think. So um, you, you mentioned this first duplex in South Padre Island. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? So I purchased a duplex um, and that was a, a tough lesson um, because there was a lot of nuances with that particular duplex where the developer uh, didn't do everything that he was supposed to do. And I didn't find out those informations until after closing. Uh, so definitely took note of those as I've been looking at uh, properties that I'm doing Burr with now to make sure that that wasn't done. Um, like what? What do you mean? Like what happened? Uh, well, they... Um, what I found out after closing and after I owned the property, it was supposed to be a single family home, not a duplex. So it was never registered uh, again, properly with the county. Uh, it was a whole brand new development. Uh, so till this day, if I put it on Google Maps, the address doesn't appear. Um, and it's been almost a year now since I bought it. Um, so it wasn't registered properly, uh, ended up being a duplex. So when the inspection came through, um, I didn't notice that it was only registered for one water meter and not two, um, which has caused, caused problems with the city uh, as far as registering both apartments, uh, having separate bills, which didn't allow me to uh, rent them separately and have them pay their own bills. So and in that instance, I decided to, you know what, I'll use them as, as Airbnbs instead where I eat the bill um, and for electricity and water. Um, and then plumbing was it was not done well. The inspector didn't catch it, which I thought was weird. Um, 
and uh, what was the other thing? This, now I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but there was a few other things that uh, were uh, were things that I didn't I hadn't paid attention to. Because the first time I buy a a duplex or any, something else other than a single family home that I didn't know to look out for. So they've caused me issues in in the in the uh, forward lines, um, but I've been able to kind of. Um, because I'm, I'm good friends with my friend, uh, Mike, who's, who was my realtor. I was like, I'm able to reach out to him. It's like, hey, I'm having an issue with this. And uh, he's been able to help me out. And so but the, you, like, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. My, well, my electrician, the, who, the one that was, he was working for the developer. Now he's also my handyman as well. So anytime there's something wrong, he's able to go over there. Uh, and he's uh, figured out things that after the fact, too, uh, that he's able to resolve for me. So. Nice. So this was a new uh, new construction, and right. um, brought to you by a friend, and you ran the numbers. You liked it. Can can we go through some of the numbers of the of the property? Yeah. What'd you buy it for? I bought it for. Um, it was uh, the offer was for two sixty, I believe, and then we ended up going down to two fifty, on the and ended up being at two forty eight when the appraisal came back. Okay, two hundred forty eight k. How'd you finance that? Conventional. Just got a conventional loan. Okay, you told me that. Uh, it's funny, when you said that, I didn't get a VA loan until like the fourth or fifth house I bought as a uh -huh. rental. I, and I don't know why. I just, I thought, I, I didn't understand the funding fee. I was like, man, I got to pay a lot of money for this and all that stuff. And then when I used it, I was like, whoa, I just got a free house. Like they wrote me a thousand dollar check to get this house. I was like, I, why, why did I wait so long to do this? So if you're listening to this and you have the VA loan, go use it, guys. Go use it. And you can roll the funding fee into the loan. So yeah. uh, it was incredible. Okay, 248. And then um, I guess in your case, maybe, I mean, maybe you were planning and living in it. So the VA loan, you have to live in it. That's the challenge. So conventional loan, right. you don't have to. Um, and then, so conventional loan. So you had to put 20% down? Yes. Okay, and where'd you get that money from? You just save it up or what? I had it. So I, uh, every relationship happens for a reason. Um, I learned about Bitcoin a few years ago and made some pretty good profit off of it. So I pulled some out of some money out of there and paid for the, the down payment. Nice. So you, you made an investment or, or somebody might say a speculation if they're talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency at this point. Um, and, but you made a bunch of money and sold it. And then you were able to take some of that money out, take it off the table and put it into real estate. So you, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's funny, ah, man, it was like 20, oh, I think it was like 2016. I was sitting in a room and this guy had like, I don't know, 110 Bitcoin or something. Oof. And yeah, this was, I was years ago. It's when it, I, it was, I don't know, it was probably like a thousand bucks at the time or something. Probably Maybe in the right. fours. Yeah. I, I mean, it was, it was crazy. And it had just, I mean, at that point, it probably, he probably bought it for that. I think he bought it for under a thousand. And now it's, it was up there at that time. But I was like, uh, I don't know about this. And then it went like through the roof. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, but you know, when you don't have a lot of money, you can't invest a lot of money in something like that, you know? Yeah. You kind of hold on to it a little bit and it just seems risky. Like I didn't want to lose it, you know? And so even if I put like 25 grand in there, it would have been fantastic. However, um, Everybody looks back and says, shoulda, woulda, coulda. But I love my investment strategy and I'm very happy with my, uh, my position right now. So 248, conventional loan. And then uh, you, it was brand new, so you didn't have to do any repairs. But it sounds like there were some things that had to happen. Maybe you had to do a little bit of work or something. But then you, what, rented it out? You, you furnished it? How much did furniture cost? Uh, I did, I did do some, um, uh, I changed some aesthetics on the, on the apartments on both sides, like changing the, the knobs to, from, stainless to gold tones and put some backsplash. So I think I ended up putting about 3,500 bucks. Uh, I'm a big fan of Facebook marketplace. So I found a lot of furniture there, super cheap. And since it's close to Mexico, I find even cheaper stuff. Um, so yeah, about, about 3000 on each side, uh, 35, because I added the backsplash and changed some, some, um, uh, aesthetics of it. That's um, with furniture too. Yeah. 3,500 per side or total? Per side. Okay. So like 7K. Yeah. I had an Airbnb. I, I probably put ten or $15,000 just of furniture in this thing. And then um, 
And then what, what does it rent out for? Uh, on the Airbnb side, it's running out for about 2400 a month. Okay. And then the other side, uh, because the two bedrooms were not furnished uh, when the renters came through, I'm renting that side for 1600 Oh, tw- that 2400 is just one side? Yep. And 1600 for the other one? Yes. So 4K on like 255 k There's probably a little bit more of closing costs and stuff like that. So like 4K on 260 k or so? Mm-hmm. Sound about right? I, what, what What's wrong with that? Nothing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so that probably can, what's your, hey, uh, what's your mortgage payment on that? 22. 2,200. So $2,200 on mortgage payment, making $4,000 a month. Nothing wrong with that right there. And so you still have the conventional loan in place. Has the property gone up in value, do you think? You bought it like a year ago. So I don't know, maybe. A little bit, not much, uh, but there is kind of quite a bit of a boom in that area. Um, while I was down there a couple of days ago, uh, they're telling me like even single family homes that are smaller than my duplex are going for uh, 260. So I haven't done an Z estimate to see what the current value is. I think it's about 270 now. Cool. I think that's that great. Sick. So that was your first deal, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and so how did you run those numbers? How did you understand, like, um, if it would work? How did you know how much it would rent for? Like, did, tell me about I that did, process. I, I didn't. I just, I, I was hungry to, to own a property and I, I liked the property. I liked that it was an up and coming property because I went, I physically went down there. Uh, saw all the uh, the infrastructure and development that's going on between McAllen all the way to Harlingen. Um, and La Feria is kind of like the town that's starting to grow. Uh, so I'm actually in La Feria, not in South Pottery. Um, um, and the price was cheap for a duplex, I, I thought. Um, and I was like, I can, in my mind, I told myself I can easily rent each side for, you know, 1300 bucks a, a month because of what I'm going to put into it. Um, and just went with it. And that was, I know that's not the best, uh, you know, advice, best quote, but that like, that's what I told myself. I'm just like, I'm going to rent this for each side for 1300 bucks a month. And I had a particular type of customer in mind. Um, and that's, that's what I was targeting essentially. And I wasn't, it was empty for about two months. And then um, I got the right tenants and I stuck with it essentially. I think that's great. I mean, uh, you had to, you had to have some, like, what did the broker give you an idea of the value? How'd you figure out the rental rates? Like, how could you just come up with $1,300? Did you know the area already? I knew, I, so I, I did forget something, actually. So something that uh, Steve mentioned to me was, uh, oh, my goodness, I just lost the name of it. They have a, a Burr calculator, uh, Bigger Pockets, sorry. Yep. So I went to the Bigger Pockets calculator and did uh, an estimate of, of that area, what those uh, properties were renting for. And I think they were renting for about 1000 or 1000 or 1100 bucks a month, unfurnished, no utilities, nothing. So I told myself about 1300 because I am including stuff and it's completely furnished down to the salt and pepper. Um, so that, that, that's what I was going with essentially. Nice. Yeah, I've used uh, websites like Rentometer before when I was looking at rents and I didn't know the area, things like that. So tons of tools that you have out there to to get an estimate. The other thing is you look for what's on the market and what's already been rented. Mm-hmm. Like you can just go on Zillow and see what's rented and uh, what's on the market, what's currently for rent and get an idea of what all that stuff looks like. I mean, I remember buying my first few rentals. I just was like figuring it out. It's like you, buying them all in the MLS, paying pretty much retail for them. Um, if I can get a little bit of a deal, I would be happy. Ten, twenty thousand dollars off. And now I'm greedy. I'm buying houses like fifty, sixty cents on the dollar. You know, I unlocked like this unknown. I didn't even know that this was possible. I, I thought other people were doing it, but I couldn't. So uh, it kind of changed the game for me. So let's talk about the the fourplex next. So you bought a fourplex that's in Amarillo, you said, and this is the one where your mom said no, and Armando said yes, and you said yes. So. Um, What'd you buy that one for? Was it 120? Um, no, I, my initial offer was 120, and then I backed out and went back went back in at 150. 150. So you decided to pay more money. Yeah, the that, the seller didn't want to budge after I went back in. So. I'll so say, wait, okay, the 120 thousand dollar offer was accepted first. 
The first time, yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know. <laughs> Mom, you cost me $30,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, that seller's playing hardball. Yeah. So, okay, so you bought it for 150. This is a fourplex? Yes. For 150,000. Oh my gosh. Everybody in California is like just crashed their car. Yeah. Uh, $150,000 is like a garage in California. Okay, and, and so did it need a ton of work? Like how much work does it need? It it was it was a complete gut inside. Okay. So yeah, complete. How much? Inspection outside. Uh, so I went into backflip, uh, asked for 100, uh, and I did. I figured I was going to be, well, I didn't figure. I mean, I just heard all the quote-unquote horror stories about flipping. So I was telling myself it was probably going to be about 20, 30K more, and so far it's about 140 that has cost me to rehab that place, um, not including what I still want to do to the exterior. So, Okay, so you bought it for 150 you got 100 in rehab costs, and you said backflip, so you used hard money? Yes. For this, hard money for purchase and rehab. Did they give you 100% or did they give you less? They gave me 100% rehab and 75% uh, on the loan. Okay, so you had to put 25% down on the purchase? Yes. Where'd you get that money? Bitcoin? Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, I love that we're turning, we're taking that Bitcoin and we're turning it into real estate. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then 100K rehab, but you're 40K over, same thing? For that extra 40K, Bitcoin? Yeah. All right, y'all. You need to be, you need to have some Bitcoin that you can sell to buy all this real estate. Um, yeah. Okay, and so, I, I do, like I did get some money from my mom. She finally kind of explained to her what the process was. So she didn't know about hard money lending. And so she's been, uh, so a private investor, I would say. My mom has been privately investing in that fourplex as well. First private money lender? Yep. What kind of rates are you paying your first private money lender? Oh, uh, my mom's my unofficial. So she, she put, I think, like an 8% rate on it. 8%. Um, Love mom. Yeah. Pretty good. Mom's like the bank. Yeah. These ways, 8%. A little bit more. A little bit more than the bank now, but probably around the time you started, about the same. Okay, 100K rehab. And so your plan is to refinance the money out of this deal on like a Burr strategy. So if anybody's listening, we've said Burr a couple of times, like buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat is like theoretically the, like do this over and over and over again. So it was coined by... I don't know, some of the bigger pockets people like back when I started. Um, probably uh, probably Brandon Turner. Probably Brandon, Brandon Turner or David Green, actually. I have his book right here. So I think Probably he's my man to... Brandon. And then David <laughs> yeah, wrote okay. the book. <laughs> um, all right. So, so we got that. And then, uh, so what's going on with that property? It sounds like rehab's over budget. There's a lot of work. And then I know you, you, you mentioned before the show, the hard money loan is coming up. Uh, do so you're having to work to get the refinance out so maybe you can talk to that a little bit like um, how how you thought it was going to go some lessons learned and what you would what kind of advice you would give to some of the people that are listening especially when they go into hard money type loan like this so um i learned as fast as i could about hard money lending and again that was on via Mar armando's uh, course uh how do you how do you get money essentially um and some of the lessons learned so far, it's so I went in with it as a strategy. So backflip has three different types of loan. I don't remember the other two, but the one that I got was the zero gravity, which they just started late last year, I believe. Uh, so for six months, you make no payments. So it's great for those of us that are starting and have like very little money um, to start your investment process. So um I, my intent was to finish the rehab in three months, get her rented out before the holidays. Um, and then, uh, you know, by now, essentially, I should have been able to exit. Um, and again, back to the horror stories, you know, dealing with permits. Um, my my contractor, which is essentially my cousin, um, not, not to dime him out, I love my cousin, uh, but he tells me like, the day of, he's like, hey, we need a Excel to turn off the power so we can finish the uh, electrical. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way, buddy. Like I, this is a bigger city. I need to know in advance because they, they can take anywhere from two weeks to a month and worst case scenario happen. It, it's been dragging for a while. So it's like two months now that we're trying to finish up the kitchens essentially and finish up the insulation uh, in the attic uh, so that um, we can be done with this project. And 
I ended up hiring a, a separate uh, electrical person, a company, a small business company in, in Amarillo, and they've been having issues with getting the permits too. Um, so after this, I actually got to call my my contractor in that and see where they're at. Um, but it was complete gut. Uh, it was uh, completely knocking down all the walls, uh, doing um, all new insulation, doing all new everything. Everything's new. Everything's brand new inside, minus the brick on the exterior. Um, and it's um, the, the the main hurdle has been the the electrical essentially. Um, I was lucky that like my cousin has, um, with his background, he was able to do a lot of the, uh, be like a one-stop shop. They're able to do the plumbing, all the, the, the interior electrical. But when he got to like the, the harder on the electrical portion with the city, that's, we had to stop there. And that's essentially what, what's been holding us up from, um, finishing this project. So yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yeah, for sure. So you got, uh, thought it would be three months. It's been longer, obviously. I'm still not done. So just kind of working on refinancing that money out. And when it comes to hard money, there's a timeline. So you got a six month timeline here. A lot of the hard money lenders are more like a year, typically Mm -hmm. like one year, but you got a product that sounds like no payment. So it saved you the interest payments, which, you know, anywhere from uh, probably 1500, probably $2,500 a month at this type rate, right around there. So you're able to kind of roll that and balloon it into the loan, which is also why I love private lenders. Private money lenders are just like that. They typically don't need uh, monthly payments and things like that. So, um, okay. So what, what is this house going to be worth? Do you think this fourplex when you're done? Um, low balling at 360, uh, hoping for 400 essentially. Okay. 360 to 400, 400 would be great. I mean, you'd have a hundred thousand dollars of equity in this property um, even at 360, you'd have 70 K in equity. So you could have, you know, like a 80, 75, 80% LTV right there on a refi and get the majority of your money out, if not all of it. And mm-hmm. that's really the goal. Uh, especially at, you know, 250 is what the hard money loan would be into it. So you get that out and then you got that extra, actually less than 250 because you had, you got 75% LTV or LTC on the 150. So you had to put some money down. Um, so you're getting, you know, I don't know, two, two fifteen or so on the hard money loan, get that out, get your cash back, pay back your private money lender, AKA mom. And, uh, and then hopefully maybe only have five or $10,000 in that deal. What are these things going to rent for? Um, trying to rent them for about 1200, 1200 a door. Yes. Whoa. $4,800 a month on a property that you'd be into it for like, I might have no money in the deal. Wow. That's better than the houses that I did for sure. Um, but you know, to say 300, you're in there for 300 at 4,800 bucks a month. That's, this number is very similar to what you had on the other property. That's yeah. awesome. And I'm, and I'm using the same strategy essentially. Like I've, I, I have everything here. Uh, I'm just waiting on that a electrical permit to be done so they can finish the kitchens and then go go fully furnish. I mean, the furniture is already in there shy of the, the kitchen stuff. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm targeting uh, specific renters as well. I've had def- definitely had people that walk by and say, Oh, we'll pay you 800 bucks a month. And I'm like, Nope, you're not the type of people I want to rent to. Um, what, what, what kind of advice can you give? What are the targeted renters that you're looking for? Uh, so I, I look at what the areas are there I'm at. So Amazon actually uh, built their warehouse uh, about two years ago there. So I'm targeting Amazon, um, because they're, they're more of the corporate side. Um, I have a relationship with Bell Helicopter, which is actually in Amarillo, Texas. Yep. Um, and part of my background, I was the V22 Osprey director uh, in Philly. So, uh, my Uber driver a couple of weeks ago actually was he, he's, um, one of the technicians there. So I mentioned to him, I was like, yeah, I have this fourplex that I'm trying to rent out to your people. Uh, so I'm, I'm aiming to specific type of people that I, uh, that I want to rent to. And then of course there, everybody think goes for the, the travel nurses. Um, so that's kind of my strategy. Um, and based in, and I do thoroughly screen, I, I learned my lesson from renters in California and I know what not to do in that aspect anymore. So yeah, well, Texas yeah, is a little bit yeah. better than that. Give people some advice. We don't talk about renting that much on the show. So what are some things you look for? Obviously, probably credit. Uh, you do a credit check and look at their credit scores and their credit history. Uh, probably rental history, maybe call some of their references. What are some things that you would advise 
that you've messed up in the past and, and what you would, especially a newer landlord? Uh, some of the things I've actually appreciated from uh, the runway group and, and like the Facebook chats on there, like the things that people talk about is like, look at their social media. I've become a stalker on social media. Uh, so I look at their social media. What are they doing? Are they partying every weekend? Uh, and they're, they're posting parties in their houses every weekend. Uh, they're LinkedIn. As much as I'm, I'm not a, a user of LinkedIn, uh, but there's something about, you know, the, the business side of people that, right, because I'm aiming towards more of the corporate side, like I'm looking at their LinkedIn. Uh, are they people that are, are serious about, you know, their their life and their, their health, uh, stuff like that, and, um, and basically trying to weed out. And then I do ask for uh, copies of their driver's license, uh, credit reports, uh, bank statements, and, and, and go from there, essentially. And if I'm... I'm very, uh, um, I, I read people, so I definitely like to meet them. I know that won't always be the case of being able to meet my my tenants, but I do like to meet them and get a feel for them to see if it's going to be the the right fit or if they're going to be the ones that are calling me because, you know, today the light flickered. Well, that's the city. I, I can't help anything on that. So that kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I love that LinkedIn, social media, that kind of stuff to see. Um, the other thing I, I would I would tell everybody that's listening to do the same thing for employees. We have people that have interviewed with us, and um, if you're not looking at their social media to see who they are outside of work, it's a huge mistake. We've seen we've had some people that have come down to like to be great potential employees on interviews, go on their social media, and it is like it's rough like uh, unbelievable type stuff they were posting on there um, to make it just a hard no to employ somebody like that. Just their, their morals and their ethics were very clear on there, which is very different than what we saw in the interviews. So um, highly encourage that for employees as well. And really your, your tenants are like little employees that are, that are out there, you know, you know, living in your house, keeping, keeping it clean, being good stewards of what you, what you have and what you own. So um, treat them that way. So those are a couple of pieces of advice I have. Um, what's next for you? Uh, so this is part of a, a to, I would like to say, uh, if you haven't answered, if you haven't asked yourself, what is your why? Uh, I'm following this as my why. Uh, I've acquired properties because um, I, I, believe, I feel and believe that my why is to establish a holistic retreat center. That was part of what I was supposed to do with my ex. I'm still friends with him, and we were still talking about what he's doing down in Mexico. Um, but I, I want to be able to, to do that in, in the U.S. because not everybody can travel to, to Mexico at a, at a moment's notice or, or you know, cheaply. Um, so um, I'm buying these properties, rehabbing, and taking that equity to build the self-sustainable eco-lodge and or retreat center in Florida, uh, where my aim is um, provide the service to, uh, or the space, the safe space to have veterans or other people that have uh, trauma and that want to heal in a holistic way to to come out here, come out there, um, and and be able to heal essentially, be able to wake up and and not feel that anxiety and pain and stress and just have a joyful life. So that's awesome. Did you come to my farm? No, I wasn't able to make it. Uh, I'm sorry. And I was so bummed because I really want to go and check out your farm. I know I mentioned it, uh, how you're growing all those things there. And I, and I was, I talked to Carlin actually, uh, that I was going to be there and, and I couldn't make it. And, and, but I'll try to make it the one in May. I think it's the next yeah, event. Yeah, May. Cool. Okay. I'd love to show you what we got going on and uh, some, of, some of the horses and stuff like that. Goats. You, I mean, you can do all this equine therapy and all this really cool stuff that I know that you probably have planned. So I'm excited for you. Um, you mentioned the runway group a couple times. What would you say is uh, some of the impact that that's made on you in your investing career, some of the decisions that you made, things like that? What are some things that, that you've learned in there and that, um, what, how's that impacted your decision making and, and kind of what you're doing? Uh, it's been great. It's definitely, um, you know, when you're in, in the Marine Corps, in the military, you have, you know, either the, the 06 and on the officer side, that's breathing on your neck, you have timelines, you have the capabilities. And then once you get out, it's kind of like, okay, what, what do I do with my hands now kind of thing? Uh, so it's the accountability. It's, it's a great piece that, uh, uh, I've had with the group is like, Hey, I told myself I was going to do this. I didn't meet it. And then it's like, I'm about to show up to the group and, and, and tell that, tell people that I didn't meet the the deadline or the task that I said I was going to do. 
So accountability is, is a great thing. Having people there, they're also sharing their their um, issues because not everything's rainbows and unicorns. And, you know, we, we post what we post on social media, but then we don't talk about the things that are that are hard in life. And um, everybody assumes that everything's just a, a walk in the park. So when you're in these groups and everybody's talking about, you know, I, well, I ran into this issue. Um, and again, going back to you don't know what you don't know, uh, kind of sets a light bulb. It's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Or I didn't know that could, that could be uh, a course of action that I could take or that um, that'll be something that I need to look out for kind of thing. So I've definitely appreciated that from the runway group and what's going. I think this is my third third group, uh, small account, small group accountability. So. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. I definitely enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to uh, having my five exits this year that so I can, you know, capitalize on uh, uh, Kiabi with the with what the runway group offers, especially the 100 uh, percent finance portion. So, yeah. Yeah. And what Marisol is talking about is we have a uh, deal with Kiabi. They do 100 percent purchase and 100 percent financing. You have to have five exits in the last two years. So it's their pro package. And then everyone else gets 90 and 100 percent. So. People in our group, Runway Altitude, Top Gun, uh, all the way up. Uh, if you're in seven-figure flipping, there's an opportunity to have 100% on the purchase, 100% on the rehab. Uh, they, they do have monthly payment requirements, so we talked a little bit about that, like no, no monthly payments, but great program. Uh, it's been really great for a lot of our partners and people that are inside of our program, so they've been a great partner for us. Um, okay, uh, if you guys are interested in joining Seven Figure Runway, go to sevenfigurerunway.com, so it's the number sevenfigurerunway.com, and you can go there even if you just want to check it out. You want to go take a look, see what it's all about, how we can help you, how we can kind of uh, hopefully, you know, give you the push that you need to keep going or get that first deal or that next deal. Um, really great program, especially for more beginner type real estate investors, folks that are just getting going. They don't have a consistent business of doing like a deal or two a month over and over and over again consistently. It's the, definitely the place to start. So um, and then if it's not the right fit for you or for us, or we say it's not the best place for you to start, we'll give you other advice. Okay. That's a great call. It's a con consulting call with my staff, my team, and they might just say, Hey, keep listening to the podcast. Like you're not ready for this yet. Um, just they'll look at your, at your life, your structure, your job right now, your goals, your plans, and, uh, and your finances, frankly, and just say, Hey, it's probably not a good idea to get started right now. You know, just over leverage you start here, here. There's a couple of free resources, those kind of things. Or if you're flipping like a ton of houses, wholesaling a ton, you might say, hey, we need to talk about altitude group because the runway group is just too, uh, too entry level for you. So uh, sevenfigurerunway.com, the number sevenfigurerunway.com. Uh, all right, Marisol, how can we help you? I have a platform. I have an audience here. Um, what are some things that you need and how can people get in touch with you? Um, so I definitely would like, uh, love more about DSCR. So there's a partnership with Kiavi. It would be cool to have like the partnership with DSCR process, right? So once you flipped, what's the exit and like, how do you, how do you, the, the how to, which I think it's on the, uh, if it's on the runway stuff at the course, the training courses, I'll, I'll get to them. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the partnership on the DSCR, which I believe Kiavi does too. Um, yep. but, um, no, so this, DSCR uh, loans. Uh, like debt service coverage ratio loans. So um, they look at um, just kind of like uh, refinancing this money out um, based on the property. So um, how can we get more long-term financing? So we have a couple partners that do that and uh, some definitely some resources for you. So if, if anyone has a DSCR product, that's something you're looking for right now that's listening, they can help you with that. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay, great. And how can people find out more about you? So they can uh, go into my Instagram uh, at Marisol Salgado one. Um, they can also reach me. I I answer my phone pretty much all the time. So I'm I'll give my cell phone number is 760-889-2052 uh, or at Sol at Sol Imar Houses. It's uh, S-O-L-Y-M-A-R houses.com. And yeah, feel free to reach out anytime. Awesome. Such a great interview. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, for everybody that's listening, uh, go to sevenfigurerunway.com, the number sevenfigurerunway.com, fill out an application, and let's see if you're the right fit for our group and see if we can help you get your first duplex, your first quadplex, your 20 acres in Florida, or whatever you want to do with your real estate journey in your life. So I'd love to be a partner with you to figure out how we can help you grow the dream that you have or the current business that you have. So, And uh, I'll see you on the next show. Bye.